Hey guys, welcome back to another video here. In this video, we're going to be doing another Python Profiles video, and this time, it's on the Ruffies. Welcome to Beaches Scaly Beasts, where I focus on the natural keeping of herptofauna and marine aquaria. So it's been a little while since I've done one of my videos on my Python profiles uh, kind of series here. And uh, these guys just happen to be both out, chilling out on the top shelf, looking fantastic. So I thought, why not quickly pull out the camera and uh, put together a video for you guys about my rough scale pythons. So these guys have been on my dream python species list for quite a while now. And I was very lucky to get my hands on some from uh, Peter Birch and I think I've had these guys for a little bit over a year now, probably about a year and a few months. And they've, they've come so far, you know, like they've, they've been such great snakes. I'm just growing them up slowly. I'm not trying to pump them full of food and get them to breeding size as quick as I can. You know, I want these animals to be in my life for hopefully the next 20 odd years. So, you know, I'm just taking it slow with these guys and seeing how they go with everything. But something that I did do along the course of the last year, I think it was about mid last year, is I put together this awesome rough scale python enclosure. Uh, completely dedicated just for these guys and if you haven't already checked out that video make sure you go back and, and have a look at how I made all the ledge backgrounds and everything on there because it's quite a good watch and I think it was about a 30 or 40 minute video so it's something quite decent so this enclosure probably won't do them for their full life uh, but in saying that you know it's a decent size for the size that they are now this enclosure is 90 centimeters long 120 centimeters tall and 60 centimeters front to back as well heating wise in here I've got a a heat panel up the top here I think it's a 40 watt heat panel it's just connected to an on off thermostat and then down the bottom as well I have a heat tile that I made out of a heat cord and a couple of tiles just kind of sandwiched together with a bit of gaffer tape and then I've also got an on off thermostat on there just to keep it nice and simple substrate wise I've just used pretty much just eucalyptus mulch um, and a whole bunch of leaf litter and stuff in there a few pandanus leaves and down the bottom here as well we've also got like a large Bit of, bit of bark that's kind of acting as a bit of a hide so quite often one of these guys will be hiding down underneath there during the day or underneath the leaf litter as such um, and I like to feed them too where you know one of them is up high and the other one's down the bottom that's usually the day that I'll kind of pick them to, to go okay I'll feed you now whereas if they're sitting together like that might not risk it just because you know they are a little bit too close together and the last thing I want to be doing is separating snakes so I try to pick my feeding times with them at the moment, these guys are pretty much on an adult mouse or even just something a little bit larger than an adult mouse, maybe a wiener rat or thereabouts. They've been really great snakes too. They're not too fussy. So they have been taking, you know, some small quails, some wiener rats, adult mice. They seem to be really good. And I kind of like to vary up the diet for these guys as well. So anyway, back to where we were talking about like substrates and stuff like that. Down here, I've got a couple of plants as you can see. And these plants are actually still in their original pots from the hardware store. I think I might have put them in some slightly larger pots with some nice soil just to give them a bit more space. I can't exactly remember what the plants are to be quite honest. I know this one I believe was a devil's ivy uh, and I think that's a type of philodendron that particular one. Um, I can't remember what this one is here but they've actually been doing really good and very very well considering the fact that I've got a couple of snakes in here. You know, a lot of people worry about some snakes with plants and don't get me wrong like something really big like a, a carpet python or an olive or something like that yeah i wouldn't probably be doing live plants with them uh, just because there wouldn't be too many options as to you know what they might crush exactly so these were just an option especially while they're small they seem to be doing quite okay with it you know they're not the kind of uh cruising around type animal where they're going to really bust around on things as much as i've seen you know they're kind of just they're a bit delicate in their movements when they kind of get around the place so from what I've had so far, you know, well, they might knock down a bit of the plant every now and then, but I just put it back up and it keeps growing. You know, it's been doing very well. And these plants too, I like they're getting min minimally watered. You know, I probably water them maybe once a fortnight or something like that, and they seem to be doing pretty good. The light itself is actually an aquarium light. I believe it's an Aquasonic brand light, and it's dedicated for plant growth. You know, it's nothing that's too extraordinary. It's something that I used in quite a few enclosures here in the past. But it's doing the job, you know, it doesn't put out too much heat either, which is awesome. You know, I don't want to contribute any extra heat to the enclosure if I don't need to. So these guys in particular, 
as pretty much anybody that knows pythons or keeps pythons, you know, there's a bit of a backstory to the rough scale pythons, um, which is a fantastic story. And I think that's half the reason that I actually wanted to get into the rough scales is just like the actual history as to, you know, where they came from, the founder animals that um, John Weigel brought into captivity, you, you know, I, when I was a kid and watching, you know, Malcolm Douglas and John Weigel's adventures up into the Kimberleys and catching a couple of these snakes and stuff, you know, I was just so enthralled with something like that. I just thought it was such a cool thing to be able to see. And the craziest thing is, is about an hour, an hour and a half away up north at the Australian Reptile Park, there's still some of those original caught rough scale pythons up there. So it's always cool to go and see those. It's been a few years since I've been up there, but you know, once everything kind of settles down, I think I need to make a trip of it and go up and actually see some of those found animals again. It's so crazy to think that these guys all came from, I think it was five collected specimens. You know, there's not exactly a lot of uh, genetic diversity when it comes to rough scale pythons. They all come from the same small group of animals, but they're such a unique species and it's such a hard species to, to be able to go and see in the wild. I know a lot of people have been doing it a lot more uh, frequently the last few years, but you know, when they first collected these guys, it was quite harsh terrain to actually go in and find them. I myself, I'd love to go and see these guys in the wild and you know, it might, might not happen for quite a few years, but I'd love to be able to make the effort one day to go and actually see them and photograph them in the wild. So these two particular animals are actually the first rough scales that I've actually touched, you know, with my own bare hands. And I have to say, when I first actually got my hands onto these guys, I was so just amazed by their scalation and the feels and everything from it. You know, you hear about it, you read about it, you hear how they're rough and everything, but it's so bizarre to actually hold a snake and feel that in, for the first time and go, wow, you don't feel like any other snake that I've ever held. That's a very unique feeling and you can see why they do have those keeled scales to kind of help them climb up little rock crevices and stuff, just like I've tried to mimic inside of this enclosure. Another great thing about roughies is they're not an overly big species of python either, usually maxing out between 1.2 and 1.5 metres or thereabouts. Yeah, these guys truly are a really amazing python species. I've, I've been in love with these guys for years and it's so nice to be able to finally have a pair of these in my collection. They're just so unique and so different and <laughs> such a weird animal, you know, it's like a cross between a carpet python and a, and a green tree python and, you know, just a mix of everything in between and then the killed scales just really top it off to be completely different again. They're so good at holding on to vertical surfaces like this as well. I always love seeing them climbing the vertical branches inside of the enclosure. Just that sort of natural enrichment, you know, you just can't beat it really. So guys, that's gonna wrap up this video here, just a nice short one. But I hope you really enjoyed having a quick look at my rough scale pythons and their enclosure. You know, if you haven't seen this before, as I said, go and make sure you hit the subscribe button and, and check out that other video that I put up of how I built this enclosure as well. And yeah, stay tuned. There's gonna be plenty more reptile related content coming this way, as well as a bit of aquarium stuff as well. But yeah, it's good to have all the new subscribers on board and I really appreciate all you guys clicking that subscribe button liking the videos, dropping a comment on there and stuff as well. You know, it's good to kind of interact with you guys on this channel. So for me and my roughies guys, make sure you take care and I'll catch you on the next video.